They know everything. So the hubris is right there, right from the very first papers that they have ever written. But do you think it indicates any kind of weakness, or, or do you really think that, that they they do know everything? Well, I, I don't, don't know. Think you know, that know they I don't. Don't mean no, they don't know everything, that, but they're scientifically studying and categorizing human oh. behavior in their own words to know how to manipulate us. Exactly. And that's why they even set up, you know, the, the Department of Social Sciences. Originally, you know, they were just... Iran was set up to develop new weapons of destruction, but they realized that in order to develop and to carry out and, 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 and uh, to take out the, 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 the weapons of destruction, they had to rely on people. In order to have people be able to deliver these things, they had to convince the people that this is what they should do. So that's what they set up. Their and they learned how to do uh, psychological testing to get police officers with low IQs that enjoy brutality. Uh, they learned how to find specialized psychological types to fill in their compartmentalized system uh, it with the types of people they need. I appreciate your call, uh, but, but William, let me tell you something. Um, if you're calling in to listen to the show, we have a free listener line. It's 646-5000, 646 so 512 646 5,000, William, do you have that number? Okay, because so many people, you know, are trying to listen on shortwave or satellite or the Internet or, or they try to call in to listen. 512-646-5000. Uh, and you can also get the free iPhone app if you have an iPhone and listen that way. Uh, and that's up on Infowars.com. John in Illinois, you're on the air. Hey, guys. Um, have either of you guys seen Being There? Uh, it was a movie adapted from... Uh Jersey Kosinski's novella with uh, Peter Sellers. Yes, of course, right. I remember it. Oh, okay, and uh, I I just recently found out that um, Mr. Kosinski received uh, grants from the Guggenheim Fellowship and the Ford Foundation. Um, in light of what Mr. Abeya said about um, Rand's involvement in JFK's kingmaking, um, do you think that Kosinski knew anything about uh, the Rand Corporation? Because the you know, the characters in the movie, their last name is Rand. So, I mean, I think there's an obvious connection. That's an obvious either. reference. But besides, Kaczynski did move among those circles. Obviously, you know, he took his life in the 1980s. But before then, there's one thing that I mentioned in the book, is that Rand was extremely uh, involved in New York City governance uh, under John Lindsay. And that's when Kaczynski was at his prime, at his peak, when he wrote The Painted Bird, when he wrote Being There, when he wrote all those novels, those wonderful novels that he wrote. Uh, because after all, you know, Painted Bird is a novel. I mean, he just made up the whole story of what happened to him in Poland. Uh, and uh, so, yes, he was very familiar with all these people. And, you know, because these, these were guys who were advising John, uh, 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 John Lindsay on how to run the city and how to be, you know, how to take the whole system that I worked in the Pentagon and to apply it. Yeah, to, they were uh, using New York and then later L.A. as models of how to basically have the military industrial complex totally secretly federalized and bring in their system of governance. I appreciate your call. Speaking of movies, obviously, Dr. Strangelove, Stanley Kubrick's film, you know, they call it the Bland Corporation, the mine right. shaft gap. Uh, uh, talk about those parallels. Well, certainly. I mean, the, the, Dr. Strangelove was... Was was uh, was a takeoff on a lot of the precepts that Rand issued during the late 1950s and early 60s. You know, saying that yes, we can win a, a nuclear war, that you will be able to survive in tunnels and mine shafts, and there will be food, there will be a portion to certain people, and some of it will be contaminated, but that will be given, you know, to animals and old people who anyhow have to die. Uh, so it's that kind of thinking, and also like the whole machine that they have, the Doomsday Machine that they have in the uh, in, in the movie. Well, that actually was described in a paper, in a RAM paper, and then it was popularized by Herman Kahn. Herman Kahn was the lecturer, you know, who, uh, who came, who went around the country, gave him lectures on how to survive the nuclear war, and he wrote a bestseller called On Thermonuclear War. Matter of fact, I'm looking at it right now, even as we speak here in my and, 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 and his character in the movie is Dr. Strangelove. Absolutely, yes. Man, Führer, I can walk! <laughs> of course, animals would have to be bred and slaughtered. There would have to be ten females to each male, and because of the incredible responsibility, they would be chosen for their beauty. 
In fact, in fact, uh, Kubrick took so many lines and so many concepts from what Khan wrote that, you know, Khan said, hey, you know, I should get royalties from this. <laughs> of course, it will be quite easy to construct such a machine. All you have to have is a will and a group of complex of computers connected to belly bombs. But why didn't you tell the world? That's right. It, all of that. I mean, obviously, it's, it's exaggerated a little bit, but not much, believe me. Not much. I mean, the, the comic effect comes from the context. And George C. Scott, we just so happen to have a plan, plan R for just this contingency. We'll only lose 10, 20 million tops. I wouldn't say we can get our hair mosque. Come on, let's do it. And You're going to let the Russian ambassador in here? They'll, they'll see the big board. <laughs> Yes. He was better after Curtis LeMay, again, one of the main figures of rap. Stay there. Let's talk about when we come back. We'll have to keep you into the next last 30 minutes. It's just too important. As gardeners, we can all relate. What do you do with all of the excess food that you grow? Freezing or canning may have been the process you've used, but the good folks at Excalibur Dehydrator have a healthy alternative to preserve the fruits of your labor. The Excalibur Dehydrator will help you preserve your fruits and vegetables quickly and easily, so you don't have to worry about premature spoiling. You can also use your Excalibur Dehydrator year-round to make delicious jerky. And the best part? The foods you dehydrate are free from excess additives, salt, and preservatives, and that's something we can all do without. To learn more and to order your very own Excalibur Dehydrator, visit Dryingone23.com and see how the Excalibur Dehydrator can help you preserve your favorite foods. Mention coupon code GCN and receive a free book on how to preserve your foods. Again, that's D-R-Y-I-N-G-123.com, Dryingone23.com or call 1-800-875-4254. That's 1-800-875-4254 today. Tyranny is here. The grim future foretold in 1984 has become reality. It really says that the state is God. The United States is now recognized globally as one of the most oppressive police states on Earth. This film conclusively proves the existence of a secret network of FEMA camps now being expanded nationwide. This documentary exposes how the continuity of government program has established an all-powerful shadow state. Police State 4 chronicles the sickening depths to which our republic has fallen. Prepare to enter the secretive world of emergency dictatorship. Body scanners, sound cameras, citizen spies, stage terror and cameras on every street corner. It's only the beginning of the New World Order's hellish plan. The police state isn't coming. It's here. Secure your copy today at Infowars.com or see it online in the highest quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. Have you ever felt like the United States government knows way too much about your financial affairs? I continue to hear stories about property seizures, frozen bank accounts, confiscation of stocks and bonds. It makes me wonder if the U.S. citizen will ever again have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unfortunately, with the Drug and Money Laundering Act, the IRS Revenue Ruling 6045 of 1984, and the Trading with the Enemy Act and Franklin D. Roosevelt's Executive Order of 1933, some precious metal holdings are subject to government intervention. For this reason, Midas Resources has prepared a report explaining the boundaries of trading precious metals privately. Whether if you have any intention of trading with Midas Resources or not, I have instructed my representatives to give this report out free. Call for your free copy at 1-800-686-2237. When investing, always proceed with caution. Again, call 1-800-686-2237. Exercise your legal right to trade metals privately. 1-800-686-2237. Do you know someone who's a Constitution basher? Then here's the ammo you need to silence them once and for all. Introducing the crash course on the U.S. Constitution, how to argue with a liberal about constitutional issues and win every time. If you believe it's time we stop discussing left-wing lies and start telling the truth about America's Christian heritage, this crash course for patriots is for you. Start neutralizing the liberal propaganda being force-fed in our schools, the workplace, and the media. The crash course on the U.S. Constitution is an audio power program that includes six CDs jam-packed with amazing information, insights, and truth that will shut the mouth of any lie-loving liberal. Order your crash course on the U.S. Constitution online at thefoundersplan.com and look for the free bonus gift. Call today 1-877-327-0365. That's 877-327-0365 or go to thefoundersplan.com. For God's honest truth, go to thefoundersplan.com today. Breathing techniques and the ratio of, say, 
10 females to each male, I would guess that they could then work their way back to the present gross national product within, say, 20 years. But look here, Doctor, wouldn't this nucleus of survivors be so grief-stricken and anguished that they'd, well, envy the dead and not want to go on living? No, sir. Excuse me. Also, when, when they go down into the mine, everyone would still be alive. There would be no shocking memories. And the prevailing motion will be one of nostalgia for those left behind. Combined with a spirit of bold curiosity for the adventure ahead. <laughs> We now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. The Rand Corporation, later Dick Cheney and others, came out in Congress in 1986 in the Oliver North hearings, planned on staging crises in these countries, uh, not just in the United States, but all over the Western world, and terror attacks, or war with the Soviets, as a pretext for totally reorganizing society. And Rand wanted that nuclear war. They wanted to be hit by the Soviets and have much of the U.S. wiped out so they could completely rebuild everything and on its ashes build a world government and reduce population uh, in the aftermath of that attack. And that's what's covered in the film by Stanley Kubrick, uh, of course, Dr. Strangelove. Uh, I know that there was a lot of pressure put out to even delay the release of the film, and the government was actually upset with some of the things that Stanley Kubrick was doing, or was that just a cover? Was Stanley Kubrick involved with the government? As far as I'm aware, he was not, no, no. But uh, the, here's the thing, which I've always found kind of curious, is that originally um, the movie was supposed to be a serious movie. Uh, it was not supposed to be a satire as it is right now. And ultimately, uh, you know, he decided to make it funny. So the question then becomes, well, did he decide to make it funny so as to diffuse the theories and uh, the opinions and notions that come out in that uh, that actually do exist, that actually are taken for serious uh, by people and, you know, by, by pe the, the technocrats who want to rule the country? Or was he also, you know, involved in, in this whole thing? And then in a way he said, well, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to make it so, like, everybody laughs at it so they won't realize that this is actually what's going on. And I know that some of the uh, government uh, agencies actually went and talked to Kubrick and said, how did you know about the descrambler codes uh, for the uh, nuclear launch uh, orders to be sent to the uh, bombers, the B-52s? I mean, he had so much internal information, a lot of it that wasn't made public at the time, but has since been made public. Right, exactly, because, you know, he was getting he was getting all, all the info from, from the RAND Corporation, from people within the RAND Corporation, from Herman Kahn, who, you know, who had been one of the luminaries of the, of the RAND Corporation during the 1950s. And they worked on a doomsday device. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. That was one of, that was one of the main things of, the, of, 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 of Khan's presentations and of his book on thermonuclear war. I mean, I have that in my book. And, you know, and he wanted to, to jacket them in cobalt and other things to create just deadly radiation. Well, RAND was also involved in the uses of the H-bomb. I mean, after all, I mean, look, the H-bomb, the A-bomb, the bomb, RAND is there from the beginning. The, the, the genesis of RAND is that it's supposed to be uh, another Manhattan Project that developed the A-bomb because it was set up by this general uh, named Arnold and uh, Frank Colbum, who was his assistant, and uh, Curtis LeMay, who later became you know, chief of staff. Uh, 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 and, and what they wanted to do is create a situation whereby uh, you would have scientists and military working together uh, in an environment that would be agreeable to the scientists, who then would be able to develop the kind of weapons that the military wanted, right? Obviously, the military then got in cahoots then with the military-industrial complex. And those industrialists who stood to make so much money out of what was being developed. So it was right from the beginning. And like I said, the Rand Corporation did studies on the use of the H-bomb, studies that were only you know 
reclassified a few years ago. And, you know, how many people would die, how much radiation it would take, what would happen, et cetera, et cetera. And all that information then came out, you know, in uh, Dr. Strangelove because it was being fed to Kubrick by Herman Kahn. And there's a scene with uh, one of the top generals uh, played by George C. Scott where they know the nukes are now going to be dropped, the doomsday Russian device is going to detonate, and they say, we happen to have a, a report prepared for this exact